what's going on guys welcome back to another swift video in today's video we're going to learn how to build a dynamic list in swift ui here is the app we're going to put together it's basically a list of stocks you can go ahead and enter in a new stock that you like and we can click this button and it boom adds it to our list everything updates dynamically everything looks great let's see that one more time boom it adds it to our list so we'll take a look at how to set this up, how to structure your models, and how to get the list to update on its own, uh, you know, whenever you add in a new model. So if that all sounds good, make sure you start by destroying the like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. If you're into Swift iOS, definitely hit the subscribe button while you're at it. Get Xcode ready, get pumped. Let's talk about some dynamic lists in Swift UI. All right, we're going to get started by opening up Xcode and creating a new project. We're going to stick with the app template under iOS. Let's go ahead and give our project a name of, let's say, dynamic list. Make sure your language is Swift and both your interface and lifecycle are set to Swift UI. Go ahead and continue, save the project wherever you'd like. We'll toss it onto our desktop. And the first thing we're gonna go ahead and do is expand our window here. I'm gonna hit resume to load up our preview on the right hand side. Let's also go ahead and expand our uh, code section here so we have a little more room to work. And let's see, we'll also go ahead and change the device to a 12 Pro Max. So we have a bit of a more modern device to see our app in, so cool. So we can get straight away into our list of content. And the first thing that we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna go ahead and get rid of the text here. And I am going to put a navigation view at the root of our body. And this navigation view inside of it is going to have a list just like that. And this list is going to have first and foremost a navigation title modifier. So we can go ahead and see that, uh, you know, title at the top of our screen. So I'm going to go ahead and call it stocks, just like that. You'll start seeing stocks at the top here. And now we want to put some content in this list. Now we're going to first create a static list and then we're going to go ahead and add a button in here. And we're going to take a look at, you know, when we tap on the button, how the list is going to dynamically update itself. So let's go ahead and actually toss this whole list inside of a vertical stack. Let me move this modifier onto the vertical stack itself. And for each of these uh, list elements, we're gonna perhaps show a, let's go ahead and call it a stock uh, row. And the stock row will take in a title and that'll just be the name of you know, whatever, whatever company we're showing. So we're gonna go ahead and say, this is a stock row. We need to go ahead and create this view down here. It's gonna be a Swift UI view. So we're gonna want a body, which will return an opaque view. So some view. And basically all we're gonna return in here is a label, which uh, consists of a title and a image. So we're gonna get title and icon here. The title is just going to be text and we're going to take in the title. We're going to add a title on here, which will be a string. And the image is going to be just an icon. I'm going to grab something from the system icons. Uh, since I believe there is an icon in there that looks like a chart. We're going to go ahead and open up SF symbols. If you're not familiar with SF symbols, it's Apple's icon library. And uh, you can go ahead and download this tool from somewhere on their website. Uh, I'll link it down below, but we're going to search for, let's search for chart in here. We'll see a bunch of different uh, charts. I'm going to go ahead and hit command shift C on that one right there. I'll go ahead and use that icon like that. And once you've got that put in there, hit try again on your preview on the right hand side here to get our preview to update. And you should see one entry with the term Apple as well as your image pop up. Sometimes your preview might be a little finicky. You might have to hit try again a few times, but there in fact is our entry. So looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and copy and paste this a few times. And I'm not gonna bother changing the title for a moment now because we're gonna have it be dynamic. So the first thing to understand with anything that's dynamic is that uh, your actual content needs to be coming, the model data needs to be coming from something that the view is observing. And when we go ahead and change that model, the view should know that it needs to recompute itself. So we can go ahead and use something like a state object and an observable object to accomplish this. 
So I'm going to go ahead and create a class here. We're going to go ahead and call this uh, our stocks view model. It's going to inherit from observable object. And what else we're going to do is we're going to create another model up here. And this is going to represent a single stock. So I'm going to say a stock is basically a simple struct that has a, let's say, title in it, just like that. And the most important part of this model for our list to be able to iterate over, you know, a number of stocks, we want this model to conform to the protocol identifiable. Now identifiable wants us to bring in a property called ID and we're just going to assign it to UUID, which is a randomized identifier. The reason this is now important is in our list, we can do a for loop over you know, models that are stocks and our for each knows how to distinguish between one versus another. Now on our stocks view model, we are going to have a property called stocks. And this is going to be a array of stock objects, just like that. And then now on our view, we are going to have a state object, which is how our view knows to observe the state of this uh, object we create. We're going to go ahead and say this is a view model. We'll say stocks view model, just like that. And finally, the way that we're going to go ahead and, you know, tell our view that it needs to update when our models here updates our stocks, we're going to mark this at at published. So whenever we change our you know, contents of this array here, it's going to go ahead and know to recompute our view. So let's go ahead, instead of hard coding each of, the, each of these, let's go ahead and do a for each in here. So now what we can do is we can do a for each uh, over our view model. Whoops, not view, we want view model dot stocks. And here we can say stock in. And for each of these, we can go ahead and create a stock row. And the title will simply be stock dot title just like that. So you're going to notice when we hit resume over here in our preview, all of our entries for Apple will go away. And that's pretty simple. It makes sense. The reason that happens is because by default, we don't have any entries in here. So let's go ahead and create some entries in here by default. So we have some starting data to work with. So I'm going to go ahead and create a few stocks. We'll go ahead and just create whatever comes to mind. We'll say Apple. And let me copy and paste it a few times. We'll say Google, we'll say Microsoft, and let's say we will say Amazon. So we got four in here. If you go ahead and hit resume on the right hand side, you'll see by default, we should have these four entries, which in fact we do. So let's enter in the dynamic aspect of this list. Now we want to have basically a way where we can, you know, type in a new, uh, you know, symbol, a new company's name hit add and it should add it into our, our list. So the way we're gonna accomplish this is in our vertical stack, I'm gonna go ahead and add a section at the top. In the section, I'm gonna have a header. This header is going to be add new stock. And the content is a view builder in which we wanna provide a, a text field as well as a button uh, that we can go ahead and tap to you know, enter in whatever we've typed. So the first thing we want is a text field in which the first parameter is the placeholder. So I'm going to say this is company name dot dot dot. The second parameter is a binding to the text that the user goes ahead and types. So we're going to say dollar sign text and I'm going to go ahead and create that up here. It will be a state property wrapped property. And the reason it needs to be state is so our view can you know be updated as the user types. So we should have a section at the top there as well as a text field. We can go ahead and uh, let me just add some padding onto this guy. And then right below this, we can go ahead and add a button. And when the button gets tapped, we'll actually go ahead and take whatever the user has uh, entered and insert it into our list. So the text here, we're going to go ahead and say, uh, this is add. Let me go ahead and give this a nice frame. So our button's nice and large. We're going to say 250 wide by 50 tall. Alignment is centered. We're also going to give it a nice background color of, let's say, color dot green. I'll give it a nice corner radius of eight points. And let me go ahead and try again on the right hand side here to get that content to hopefully appear. You just have to be patient with your preview. It loves to take its time. It's super annoying, actually, but that's okay. We can be patient. There is our button and there is our field. 
Uh, I kind of don't like the fact that the text color is blue on our button. So we're going to go ahead and assign the foreground color to be white. And let's see, we might want to do color.white, just like that. And let's also go ahead and bold this. And we'll say this is add to list, not just add. Okay, looking good. So we've got this text field, we've got this button, and we've got our list. Now we have to do something when we actually tap on uh, this button. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is we could do all the logic here or we can create a separate function, which we'll do right here. We'll say func add to list. This is going to, uh, it doesn't have to take in any text actually because we can check in here. We could actually call this try to add to list. And the reason we're gonna call it try is because if the text is empty, we don't wanna add anything. And in here we could just say self uh, try to add to list just like that. And now in here what we can go ahead and do is we can say guard that the text is empty, rather is not empty. If it's uh, not empty, we can go ahead and, you know, go ahead and proceed. The other thing that you might wanna do is, you know, you might wanna trim out the, you know, white spaces and check that it's not empty because the user might be, um, you know, entering in just a bunch of white spaces. We might wanna say trimming characters white spaces is empty. Make sure that, uh, you know, is not empty. So now that we know that we have some text, we can go ahead and simply create a new stock. So we're gonna say let new stock is going to be a stock with a title of text. And the last thing we need to do to get our dynamic list to dynamically update is simply add it to our array of stocks, which is held in our models here. So it's in our view model. So we're gonna say view model dot stocks dot append. And we call this guy new stock just like that. And that's it. That's how you get this to be dynamic when you go ahead and actually, uh, you know, run this, which we'll do actually right now. Let me hit resume on the right hand side. You'll see whatever we enter, we'll be able to hit the add button and it'll go ahead and add it. And the one actually other thing that I'll do here is once we've gone ahead and added it, let's go ahead and nil out that text or we'll empty it out just to clear our actual text field as well. So our text field will reset back to the empty state. So let me go ahead and hit the run button on the right hand side. We have our list with our starting stocks. Let's say we wanted to add in Tesla here because who doesn't love Tesla? We're going to go ahead and hit this button and boom, it gets added to our list and it also clears our uh, text here. Now, the way you would delete any of these entries is basically the exact same. You would add a on swipe uh, action handler to one of these, you know, for each entry. So if you look into our list, we have this stock row. And if you start typing dot on, there's a bunch of them. There's on disappear, on appear, on drag. Uh, you can find the one that is uh, on, I believe, let's see, you want to find drag, it's either drag or delete. There's quite a few of them, I digress though, but basically whenever the user drags on one of these, you want to get the position that they dragged on and then you would just, instead of appending to your, you know, list of models, you would just remove from your list of models and that's it. So if you wanted to create a dynamic list, this is how you would do so. Super simple in Swift UI. Everything is dynamic and reactive. You don't have to update the UI yourself uh, by just observing the data properly with state object and observable object. You kind of get this functionality for free. If you haven't done so already and you enjoyed the video, make sure you destroy the like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. If you're new to the channel or even if you've been around and haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to hit subscribe so we can grow this channel together. And of course, don't ever hesitate to leave a comment down below with any help you might need, suggestions, video ideas if you just want to say hi i love hearing from you guys and i try to reply to every single comment uh, within a few days at the latest so thanks again for watching i'll see you on the next one